I went to an exhibit at the de Young Museum in San Francisco called Monet in Normandy, and as I walked around, I had a feeling of familiarity. I realized slowly that Monet must have been my father's favorite painter. I called him to ask, and it was true. Uh, he, Monet was his favorite painter in art school, and that gave me the idea for this poem, which is, I spend an afternoon with Monet. The poet interrupts the painter. It looks like a poem made of a thousand commas. I didn't mean to be abrupt. He tips back his hat to raise the black commas of his eyebrows. I can't help myself, I ask. When did the mists veil you and make you this burly old bride? He pretends not to hear, flips off another series of commas, the strokes daisy in rows of white, maybe foam, maybe snowflakes. The scritch of his brush repeats itself 50 times as I wait. Everyone assumes white is his finishing touch, but I see he begins with airy patches, flecking light into bush, sky, and ocean, as if seeing through lace. Is it his eyesight? He begins with light, then adds dark emphasis, light on light, the whole of sky and sea and rhythm, as though harmony were endemic as minnows or weeds. I stand back all afternoon and watch as he accrues like a greedy accountant, like God, flakes, flocks, fleets, puffs, petals, and leaves. And while I'm on Monet, I'll do another Monet poem. This one is paying bills instead of writing a poem about Monet. It's April and I'm growing green with a poem, but bills bore into my desk, so I crosshatch an impressionist sketch on the payee line. Riches arch in my deposit book like the mineral caves the surf carved out at Porville while Monet stood there at his easel, painting thunderous iceberg waves flecked with black and white. I sign in the lower right corner, as artists will, retotal the balance and turn up a new check. Diamonds a mile down, crack, chip, erode. A crash disengages and the salty spurge spreads geodes on sand. Monet painted in a hurry. Maybe I should write checks more quickly to get to the poem. I scrawl an enigmatic verse on a mount. Another smash of water. More gems float away in a twinkling field. And my ledgers full of dark water, tipped by snowy zeros. A few more lines and I'm broke, now seethed with a need for money instead of Monet. I lick stamps, close envelopes, and face emptiness of pocket and head, slack tied. But there's the pen glowing in shifting pastel light. I've just been on an airplane, and I don't like being on airplanes, so I'll read one of my airplane poems. These are poems I write so I can remain calm because writing really is so much more socially acceptable than gasping when you hit air pockets. This is called Salvation. Salva vida, bajo su asiento. It took me a while to translate lifesaver under your seat. Under this fragile body of lofting steel, our tennis rackets and raincoats, our bathing suits, and below that, turbulent pockets and updrafts, and under that what no lifesaver can cushion. But in the air they soothe in every tongue. Salvavida is below your asiento, and that's all you need to know. That, and at the press of a button, everything in featherweights. The five-ounce can of tomato juice at 90-minute intervals. Two cookies and 20 chips, 
a pillow small as a cloud measured with fingers on the window. They float up the aisles to keep you warm and half asleep, to make sure that Salva Vida is handy. Someone like the mother you ought to have had who salvas your Vida while it hurdles at 500 per. Someone who says in case you speak English and only up here, salvation is at hand. <laughs>